Hey everybody, Richard from EG4 here, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about a question that's been coming up a lot in the forums. Uh, we've seen it on a few different of the uh, posts on there. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the proper startup order for using the LifePower 4 batteries. Uh, we will be using those with the EG 6500 EX model today, and I'll just talk about uh, how that whole system is set up and starts up. First thing I want to talk to you guys about is making sure you guys have the right size batteries to the right size inverter. We normally recommend leaving yourself a little, about a 20% leeway there. So these batteries, they're five kilowatt batteries, 5,120 watts. Um, we would recommend using these with about a 4,000 watt inverter. So if we've got the 6,500 inverter, we'd say you should have two of these to run a load. Um, today I'm just going to be starting them up. We're going to run a small load here, um, actually a pretty big load just so you guys can see them in action. But the first thing is going through the startup order. So the LifePower 4 has a built-in pre-charge resistor and you can actually hear it when it's uh, operating during the initial startup process. It kind of sounds like a clicking noise. And when you're starting these up, they need to have an open electrical connection to the inverter. And by that, I mean that the breakers or anything that you have inside there need to be in the on position. So if you have them flipped into the off position, it's gonna go through its pre-charge uh, cycle and it's not gonna actually do anything to start the inverter with the pre-charge. So I'll go ahead and give you guys a demonstration here. I'm gonna show you guys the correct way to do it first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and reach back here and turn on the breaker so that the electricity can flow directly from the battery to the inverter. The next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn on the battery and you're gonna see the light cycle through its, pre, uh, its startup process. And then you can hear, I, you might not have heard it on camera, but there was a couple of clicks there when it was doing this pre-charge. And now the state of charge lights are lit up. I can see that this battery's got about a 75% state of charge. And my run light is flashing every few seconds. That means the battery is in an active status and it's ready to run a load. So with that being said, I can actually, let me turn it towards you guys here, turn on the screen for the inverter and you'll see it kick on the screen's turned on. The inverter takes about 10 seconds to start up as well. We don't have a load or anything on there yet. So that is the first step to ensure that you're starting it up properly. So what I'd like to do, I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything off now. is I'm gonna run you guys through real quick what happens when you start this equipment up in the wrong order. So I'm gonna make sure that there's no charge or anything in here. So this time I'm gonna turn my battery on first. And right now I've got the rear breaker in the off position so electricity cannot flow through it. So if I turn on my battery, it's gonna go through its pre-charge status like normal. And then you'll see that after it goes through that, it has the state of charge lights on and the run light on. It says that it's ready to work. However, it didn't go through the pre-charge with the inverter. So as soon as I flip the switch, I'm gonna hear it kick in for a second and then the alarm light comes on. This fault will not allow any electricity to come out of the battery. It's essentially a short circuit fault. And so because of the way that I tried to start it up, I uh, had the battery fault out. So the way to fix this is pretty simple. All you gotta do is turn the breakers off, give it a second, and to continue, you just turn the breaker back into the on position. And then if I flip this on, it'll go ahead and start again. Let me go ahead and show you that real quick, just to show you guys all how it's working here. So I can see that this is now in the ready position and turn my inverter back on. So for this next demonstration, I'm gonna show you guys running a load on the uh, batteries with these two 6,500 inverters. We've got these set up for split phase. This, however, is only a 5.5 horsepower uh, air compressor. It's single phase, so it's run off of a 120 volt plug that I've got plugged into a load center on the side here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on both of my breakers in the back. Make sure that those are in the on position. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my inverters are not on. I'm gonna turn on four of my batteries. All right, so when I see all four are in a ready status here, I've got the lights on all four of these. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on both of my inverters. Now the inverters take about 10 seconds to start up. So there's a countdown on the front screen. And as soon as that counts down on both of them, I know that it's ready to be in use. And I can tell that they're in a split phase configuration because the front screen says 2P1 and 2P2. That means split phase inverter one, split phase inverter two, so two phase. So over here, we've got this. Like I said, I've got it plugged in on the side here to a load center that I've built into this cabinet. And with four batteries, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. I'll show you guys this operating. So as you can see, four batteries can easily take the startup voltage um, and the amperage that that requires to get going. Uh, these batteries are pretty robust, so I can actually run this off of two, I think, if I've done the math correctly. So let's double check. I've got two batteries turned on. I've only got the top two batteries turned on right now. All the other four are in the off position. So let's go ahead and turn this on. So again, you can see that that started it up, it took the inrush current, and then it operated it. Um, one battery I do not think is gonna run this. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a demo of what happens when you uh, pull too much for a single battery. So we've got one battery. It's not just the inverter that matters when you guys are running the load. Your battery has built-in protections to make sure it's not discharging or charging too fast. So you need to ensure that you've got enough battery power to run all of your loads as well as the inverters. And that's kind of why we have that uh, ratio of about a 20% uh, difference in the watt hours of the batteries versus the watts that the inverter can do. So we've got one battery now. So even though I've got both of my inverters turned on, which can handle 13,000 watts, with just one battery, if I flip this on, you can see it immediately trips this top battery and it doesn't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Again, if this happens to you, it's very simple to restart. You simply turn the battery off, wait a second, make sure your inverters are in the off position, and then you can turn your battery back on. I'll turn two of them on here. So now I've got both of these inverters. I should be able to turn those on without any issues. And as you can see, they're ready to go again. So if you ever do encounter this, it's very simple to reset. You just turn the batteries off and restart. So if you guys have any questions or anything, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, take a minute to go ahead and like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.